Giants following, obviously. Two runs, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. The times are added together. Total time combined is what determines the finish order. And uh, it's about as simple as that here as we look at the start list. Donc ici, le tableau nous indique que la liste de départ, ça commencera avec la tête de France, Solène Jean-Bac. Nous avons la Canadienne, Wolfencroft, Lauren, dans sa 5. Wolfencroft, one of the very favorites over here in the Giants Hall Theater. And uh, Solène Jean-Bac de France, who is a veteran of the Paralympic Winter Games, uh, a very strong competitor to watch. A very warm welcome to you here from Whistler Creekside for coverage here on Paralympic Sport TV of the women's and men's standing divisions for Giant Slalom. Now we hope to be getting the first run underway for the women's in just a few moments time. Some German fans They'll be hoping for Andrea Rotfus to add to her silver from Monday slalom. Now, Lauren Wollstonecroft from Canada is again favoured to capture a medal in the giant slalom here. She's the defending gold medal winner and fresh off her another gold from the slalom on Wednesday. Solène jean Bac will be getting us underway and she has two third places this season in World Cup Giant Slalom races. The Super G and the downhill are Solène's more favoured events. The 21-year-old from Toulouse was eighth in the slalom two days ago so Pretty foggy conditions, as you can see, up the top of the course, but not bad enough, fortunately, for a postponement. And if you were watching our coverage yesterday of the visually impaired and the sitting divisions, well, you'll know that in, in seconds almost here at Whistler, this fog can move in and out. And so very much luck as to where the fog is the moment each competitor starts. Now do remember that the camera positions aren't exactly right on the course to give a wider angle so they are zooming in from a, a little distance away so it does look worse than it will be for these competitors here but still an extra hurdle that they need to negotiate as jean Bac comes down forty-five gates here on France's giant slalom course and jean Bac sets the opening time 123.41 and that is the time to beat now bronze medalist from the slalom and home favourite one of them at least Karolina Wisniska, born in Warsaw, Poland, but now a resident of Vancouver. And she will again have a lot of support down in the grandstands below. She now has seven Paralympic medals to her name after that bronze she won two days ago and already performing pretty well here. So you'll know if you've been watching our Alpine coverage so far, the ladies go at 40 second intervals. So as Wisniska comes down very nicely there for the finish, Marina Pertura will already have started. We just see a quick recording of her start and then we pick her up live. As you can see, just shooting down the course. We thank our television broadcast partners for linking it all together very nicely for us cameras down this mountain and essential for us here in the commentary booth 
particularly with the fog the way it is. So Pertura struggling a little bit. She was seventh in the slalom. And the Canadian fans down below won't mind that too much. Vizniska. Is the leader so far. But just the two races down. Here's the third. Vizniska is going to maintain that lead fairly comfortably. But it's Lauren Wollstonecroft who comes right after this lady, Marie Brochet. Now Brochet, fourth in the slalom. And she said it was just horrible, a horrible feeling to finish in fourth place. Widely considered the worst place to finish. So she's skied pretty nicely this season in both the slalom and the giant slalom divisions. Boshe comes down now. Well, second place for her for now. And here is Lauren Wollstonecroft. Four golds to her credit so far in her career. And the favourite for a fifth one here. She's won two of three World Cup giant slalom races this season. And won gold at the World Championships in Korea last year. So, Wollstonecroft, look at that. Four seconds ahead of her teammate. And as in the slalom, she is again destroying the competition. She's so dominant over these technical courses. Listen to the crowd urging her down the hill. Well, she's going to go in the lead. There's no question about that. 6.33 ahead. And Vizniska, remember, bronze medalist, so no slouch herself. Inga Medvedeva. Oh, and just recording of few problems that she had at the start now this is the standing division so there are various different categories some athletes skiing on one leg some using either one or two prosthetic limbs some skiing well with and without poles depending on their different disability and it is easy to forget with the speed and the agility that these races come down the mountain that they are coping with some sort of injury or condition but coping extremely well and proving to all of us well disappointment there for Medvedeva but these athletes proving to all of us just what is possible so Natalie Tiak the second French racer of the day. Ninth in the slalom. And let's see how she does at this checkpoint. Well, Wollstonecroft, as we expected, very much the front runner at this stage. So here comes Tiak. She's in the LW2 class for above the knee amputees using the two outriggers or poles. And we can see, well, she wasn't able to make it through that middle section. And that, unfortunately, for Tiak will be the end of her day. Alison Jones of the United States. Fifth in the slalom. see if she can improve on that performance here so Wollstonecroft well really putting 
a pretty tough time to beat. Jones saying, well, after her fifth place in the slalom, she didn't like her first run, but the second run she had nothing to lose, she felt, and thought she had a much stronger run and showed everyone what she could do. And that's often the way you see here in the Alpine events, in the, in the two run races. The winner, of course, a combination of the two times. Putting down a solid, if not spectacular, first run you often see, and then leaving it all out there second time around. And they've had a more of a feel for the course. So, well, Andrea Jevia was down to start, the Canadian, but she's decided to pull out. And here is Andrea Rotfuss of Germany. Silver medalist for Monday's slalom race. And she had one win and one third place finish in the World Cup this season. A lot of German fans we saw there. Could be good enough for second. It is. Still well behind Wollstonecroft, but that could be a familiar sight as the rest of these races come down. Now, Petra smiles over. who was in tears after her second run, just 19 years old, but in her second Paralympic Games. She was in tears. She crashed out after her second run in the slalom on Monday. A huge disappointment for her. Four years of training. Can hinge on one wrong turn, one little rut in the course. She said she felt terrible. It was a stupid mistake when she missed the gate. And she thought maybe, well, she was so happy after the first run and was trying to go even better. And it was a mistake in her head. So she said she was hoping for a better performance in this, the giant slalom, and in second place at the moment. As we see, Melania Corradina, 22-year-old, from Italy. This her first action of these Paralympic Games. Chose not to start in the slalom. And she's entered in all five Alpine disciplines. Often competitors will enter everything and then pick and choose depending on how they're feeling, their strengths, the weather sometimes. A lot of different factors to compete in all five disciplines with the tight Alpine program here can be pretty tricky so some will try and do it and others will try and save themselves for their better events so Corradini into eighth place we're about halfway through the field at the moment and here's another Canadian Arlie Fogarty disqualified on the first run of her slalom event on Monday. So the 27 year old from Montreal. She's the 2007 and 2008 Canadian giant slalom champion. And it's the Super G, which we'll see later in the week. And that is her favorite event. Let's see how she can do here. First made the national team back in 2003. She's been skiing on the World Cup circuit for the past five years or so. Coming down to complete these final few gates. Wollstonecroft still very much the time to beat. And if things keep going like this, well... She's going to have... Another big cushion as she did after the first run in the slalom. So Evita Chilbakova of Slovakia, who celebrated her 47th birthday on Monday during that slalom event. And she finished 12th. So 
pretty good first part of the course. Sherbakova is in the LW6 category. That's for skiers with one hand or arm amputated and using the one pole, as you can see there. So Sherbakova coming down to the finish and into fifth place. Now Melanie Schwartz, another Canadian in this field, came 13th in her first ever Paralympic race in the slalom. Said it would have been nice to ski better and be faster, but at least she has two clean runs. So now that she does have at least that first result under her belt, she'll be able to maybe push a little bit more. She said she wasn't skiing her best, but was trying as hard as she could and couldn't quite get there. Wasn't thrilled, but not overly disappointed. Well, something to build on at least. And let's see if she can do so. Here in this giant slalom event. Going pretty wide around that corner. She'll need to keep the momentum going. She's also discussing just how hard it is for all these athletes to deal with the scheduling changes that we've had here at Whistler. The program being completely rejigged and of course different length skis, long and short, depending on the event, whether it's a technical slalom event like this or one of the speed events. The downhill postponed to later in the week and that was originally going to be the first event, so back and forth for each of them. For those who are competing in all the disciplines of course, but it is the same across the board, so a let's a story now of the United States. Born in Bulgaria. But very much a resident of the US. Now, she's a fair way back. And she managed to get a clean run in the first of the two slalom events on Monday. Or the two runs, unfortunately. It's not going to be a clean one here. So, that'll do it for a little story. And we will see her in the giant slalom, but unfortunately she hasn't yet recorded a finish here at these Paralympic Games. Karin Fazel, 35-year-old from Switzerland. 11th in the slalom two days ago. Now she said she was putting a top eight finish as her minimum requirement here at these games and a medal as her dream. So she needs to improve by at least three places here. But she has entered in all five events. So Faisal coming down and good enough for 11th place place she finished in the slalom as I said on Monday but still seven races scheduled to start do sometimes get last minute withdrawals just some depending on a variety of, of factors now Hannah Pennington 16th in that slalom she'll be hoping for better here this the second of the two events she's entered and resident in Winter Park, Colorado. Home to a very impressive adaptive ski center for athletes, not just from the United States, but from all around the world. And we've heard many athletes based out there. Some of the New Zealanders. Frederick Stottier, the lady from Iceland, who was the first Paralympian in Iceland's history. She spent number of months training there as well and good to see athletes from all around the world sharing those top class facilities so Hannah Pennington behind Wollstonecroft as expected she's still leading the way and no particular contenders on paper left here to race in the first run but 
You never know what might happen. We saw Claudia Lurch yesterday in her division. She'd been absolutely destroying the field on the World Cup circuit. She had one win where she was 14 seconds clear of the second place after the two slalom runs. The giant slalom runs, I should say. Now, we saw her crash out in the first run. Now, she did pick it up and, and come back for a second run, but you just never know what might happen. We very much don't wish disaster on anyone, but Wollstonecroft could perhaps crash out, and that could very much open the door for any of the others who will be grouped at the moment, several seconds behind her, but we'll have to see how this plays out. So, Ursula Puello Marimon of Spain was able to complete her first run in Monday slalom. And she'll be hoping to successfully negotiate. Hearing a few, well, she's doing well so far we just heard the audio there and she's down unfortunately for her well she did seem to be struggling now she can continue as long as you don't go past the gate and through the next the level of the next gate further down you can hike back up get yourself back on track and continue well, disappointment. She was just coming to the end, but some Spanish fans applauding her efforts. Katja Saarinen, 30-year-old from Espoo in Finland, now living in Helsinki, the capital. And she'll be looking to improve on her 10th place finish from Monday slalom. Disappointment for Saarinen and this hill here at Whistler Creekside, as it did yesterday, proving pretty difficult for several of these races. Disappointment for them, disappointment for Katya. And we could have a fairly reduced field for this afternoon's second run. Now conditions certainly much better than they were yesterday as we've seen Elena Kudyakova of Russia come down. She's just entered in the two technical events. Another in the LW6 class. The skier is using the one pole. 14th she finished in the slalom. And the 25-year-old just disappearing there into the fog. And hopefully she'll reappear in just a moment. We can hear it. There she is. And you can tell from the way these skiers are skiing. It's, uh, obviously the fog is very, very much present. But it isn't quite as bad as it appears on your screens. And they will be able to at least see from gate to gate and know where they have to go. They'll know the course of what, as well, get a chance to inspect it beforehand. And that's crucial for all elite racers. So there'll just be three more races after Kujikova. As she comes into view for the fans down in the grandstand, the horns are blowing. The bells are ringing and we can hear the cheers and the applause. So Kujikova comes down and her time 131.24 into 14th place. Now Laura Valianu, 19 year old from Romania. Now, in her young career, she was a member of the Romanian Junior Alpine Skiing Team. Able-bodied, that is. 
and she was involved in a motorcycle accident and had her right leg amputated under the knee. So she will know all about elite ski racing and many of these athletes on the hills here in Whistler were, well, just keeping it together here. But many of them were pretty elite ski racers before being involved in an accident of some kind and that does make it much easier for them to adapt. They know all about racing, they know about feeling the hill. And Valiano completing her first run. So, just two athletes left. Paraskiva, Krista Dopolopoulou. And here she comes. Out of the fog. She studied architectural design and has been skiing on the World Cup circuit for just a couple of years. Made her debut back in 2008 at the European Cup in Fitzal in Austria. So fairly new to the sport of Paralympic Alpine certainly at this level but good to see representatives from all around the world as she comes down towards the final reaches of this first run in the women's giant slalom standing event unfortunately little mishap there and let's see if she can finish this. So, now you heard the on-course commentator perhaps down for the people in the grandstand talking about the blue lines. They are just a guide for these athletes. You can go as wide as you like. It's obviously not to your advantage to take wide turns, but it's only the gates you have to ski between. And listen to the crowd giving her a very warm reception for her determination. Now, Guyan Uznian of Armenia. Guyan, well, she's going to continue. Guyane had her right leg amputated below the knee due to injuries she sustained during an earthquake in Spitak in Armenia back in 1988 when she was just four years old. And he, she comes down to complete her first run. It's not going to be challenging, but she will be back this afternoon to complete the second run, we hope. So, confirmation, Wollstonecroft leads by, well, more than five seconds from Petra Smarzova and Andrea Rotfus and the crowd and Karolina Wisniska in fourth place there will be hoping she can improve on her fourth position. I have really gotten to be a fan of the 